what, what the haters talking about. Because my treatments worked, and those patients that are now speaking out were the same ones that praised and came back over and over and referred family and friends to see me. The media convinced them that everything I did was wrong and bad. They feel I broke their trust. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Oh. It is just a complete nightmare. The stories that are being fabricated to sensationalize this, then the AG would only accept my plea if I said what I did was not medical and was for my own pleasure. They forced me to say that or they were going to trial and not accepting the plea. I wanted to plead no contest, but the AG refused that. I was so manipulated by the AG and now Aquilina and all I wanted was to minimize stress to everyone, like I wrote earlier. Going down a little bit further. In addition, with the federal case, my medical treatments with the Olympic slash national team gymnastics were discussed as part of the plea. The FBI investigated them in 2015 and found nothing substantial because it was medical. Now they are seeking the media attention and financial reward. Would you like to withdraw your plea? No, Your Honor. Because you are guilty, aren't you? Are you guilty, sir? I said my plea, exactly. The new sign language has become treatment. These quotes, these air quotes, I will never see them again without thinking of you and your despicable acts. I don't care how they're used, I will always think of quotes and the word treatment. It was not treatment, what you did. It was not medical. There is no medical evidence that was ever brought. When this case first came to me, and I've told you this, and I apologize to the Olympians and athletes, but I have five children, two dogs. My parents live with me. I work four jobs. I don't have much time for television. I don't watch sports. Although last year I was a soccer coach, much to the <coughs> laughter of my family. <laughs> I didn't know anything about you, your name, or anything that was going on. And so when I kept saying, we're going to trial, here's the date, and everyone wanted more time, I said, no, nope, here's the cutoff. And then the cases were merged, and we delayed it. And I still thought, well, maybe there's a defense of medical treatment. And why did I think that? Because it's my job to be fair and impartial, but also because my two brothers and my father are very well known and respected doctors real doctors with real treatments and research dedicated to healing. I haven't considered that in this case, but I have heard from your survivors now 
that they trust doctors like I trust the doctors in my family and the doctors I go to. But I still thought, well, there's a defense of medical treatment, and there are changes in the medical community every day for the betterment. So up until the time you pled, I believed that maybe there was a defense here, despite the felony information. I was ready for trial. Your counsel was ready for trial. The Attorney General's office was ready for trial. You, sir, decided to plead because there was no medical treatment. You did this for your pleasure and your control. This letter, which comes two months after your plea, tells me that you have not yet owned what you did, that you still think that somehow you are right, that you are a doctor, that you're entitled, that you don't have to listen, and that you did treatment. I wouldn't send my dogs to you, sir. There's no treatment here. You finally told the truth. Inaction is an action. Silence is indifference. Justice requires action and a voice, and that is what has happened here in this court. 168 buckets of water were placed on your so-called match that got out of control. I also, like law enforcement, or like the Attorney General, want to thank law enforcement for their investigation, but I also want to be the voice on behalf of the survivors who asks law enforcement to continue their fine work and to also include the federal government. There has to be a massive investigation as to why there was inaction, why there was silence. Justice requires more than what I can do on this bench. I want to also applaud all of the counsel in the Attorney General's office. I want to also applaud defense counsel. You all have done fine work. You've made me proud of our legal system. We all work together for the betterment of our community, and that is law enforcement, prosecutors, defense counsel, investigators, there are countless people. It's the only way our system works. We need this balance. So all of you, when I look at myself as Lady Justice, my arms are like this, they are balanced. Prosecution, defense are balanced. It only starts to tip after there's a plea and after I take into consideration everything that's happened. So I want everyone to understand <coughs> I've also done my homework. I always do. People versus Wakalowski, I'm sure I slaughtered the name, I apologize, but it is spelled W-A-C-L-A-W-S-K-I, 286 Mishap, 634, it's a 2009 case. <coughs> and in it, and I want you to clearly understand, it says, plainly, the law does not limit victims' impact statements to direct victims. It doesn't say, and I have found nowhere that limits me from having you hear all of your
Court victims. As I said before, when counsel came to me and said, we're not going to go to trial, despite our court having already sent out 200 of the 800 juror requests. And they told me their plea, and would I consider it in lieu of trial? There was the agreement between us because I always, and they know it, they are familiar with me, let people speak. And I wanted all victims. And we had a discussion about which victims. And of course, there was an objection to one of them. I let it come in anyway. That was part of the plea that you entered into to allow the victim impact statements. Because after that discussion, I know your lawyers, as good as they are, sat down with you and said, the judge is going to allow this. And when it comes down to it, I know it also because this was signed by the Attorney General, by defendant, and by defendant's counsel on November 22nd, 2017. Aside from the letter that you wrote a couple of months after your plea, which tells me you still don't get it, there's something I don't understand and I want to make clear. <coughs> Sir, you knew you had a problem. That is clear to me. You knew you had a problem from a very young age, even before you were a doctor. You could have taken yourself away from temptation, and you did not. But worse yet, there isn't a survivor who hasn't come in here and said how world-renowned you were. I trust what they say. You could have gone anywhere in the world to be treated. You could have gone to any resort, any doctor, place where you could get treatment. In Europe, they have all sorts of hidden places for things like this. No one had to know, and you could have found some treatment, some help, taken some medicine. You would have done that if you had cancer. I know you would have. You're about self-preservation. But you decided to not address what's inside you that causes this control urge, that causes you to be a sexual predator. So your urges escalated. And based on the numbers that we all know go unreported, I can't even guess how many vulnerable children and families you actually assaulted. <coughs> Your decision to assault was precise, calculated, manipulative, devious, despicable. I don't have ad words because your survivors have said all of that. I don't want to repeat it. You can't give them back their innocence, their youth. You can't give a father back his life or one of your victims her life when she took it. You can't return the daughter to the mother, the father to the daughter. You played on everyone's vulnerability. I'm not vulnerable. Not to you. Not to other criminals at that podium. I swore to uphold the Constitution and the law, and I am well trained. I know exactly what to do. 
and at this time I'm going to do it. And I want you to know, as much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. You have done nothing to control those urges, and anywhere you walk, destruction will occur to those most vulnerable. Now, I am honoring the agreement. I'm also honoring what's been requested of me. And I want you to know, I'm not good at math. I have a cheat sheet. I'm only a lawyer. I know that you have a lot of education in physics and math. But I have a cheat sheet. It is my privilege on count one, two, five, eight, ten, and eighteen. And 24. To sentence you to 40 years. And when I look at my cheat sheet, 40 years, just so you know and you can count it off your calendar, is 480 months. The tail end, because I need to send a message to the parole board in the event. Somehow God is gracious, and I know he is. And you survived the 60 years in federal court first, and then you started my 40 years? You've gone off the page here as to what I'm doing. My page only goes to 100 years. Sir, I'm giving you 175 years which is 2,100 months. <clears throat> I just signed your death warrant. I, I need everyone to be quiet. I self-contempt powers. I told you I'm not nice. <laughs> I find that you don't get it, that you're a danger. You remain a danger. I'm a judge who believes in life and rehabilitation when rehabilitation is possible. I have many defendants come back here and show me the great things they've done in their lives after probation, after parole. I don't find that's possible with you. So, you will receive jail credit on counts 1, 2, 5, 8, 10, and 18 of 369 days. On count 24, you will have 370 days jail credit if you are ever out, which is doubtful. You will be required to register with the Michigan Sex Offenders Registration Act, complying with all of the requirements of that act, in addition to global position monitoring system, you would wear a GPS. You will pay restitution in the amount to be determined based on whatever amounts are submitted and your attorneys can ask me for a restitution hearing so that I can determine what a reasonable amount is for the victims. I am leaving restitution open as long as those victims have issues that can be medically documented. You will comply with DNA testing and pay a $60 fee for that. I suspect that was already done, but you owe $60 back to the county for that, or law enforcement, whoever, will put it in the right pocket. 
You must submit to HIV testing and complete counseling associated with HIV and AIDS. You must waive confidentiality and allow test results and medical information obtained from this test to be released to the court. You will pay $476 in state costs. You will pay a crime victim's assessment in the amount of $130. Does counsel wish to address court costs and fines? I don't know his financial state. Judge, he doesn't have any money to pay the court costs and fines. If the court wants to impose it, the court can impose it. I'm not imposing any court costs and fines, and here's the reason. I don't know what he has or what he'll get in the future. The victims deserve the money. The county will survive one way or another. I'm also going to make recommendations to the Michigan Department of Corrections for mental health treatment. Health treatment, I understand he has medical conditions and he should be allowed to take medicine for that. He should have individual and group counseling. Treatment for sexual predators, whatever they allow. I'm also going to send a message. I'm not sure, but I believe I read an article, sir, that you were treating people in prison that don't have a license, don't commit any more crimes. I know you don't have any more lives to give, but you can't be treating people. You're not a doctor. So I'm not sure how that's happening. But I wanted to send that message. You have 21 days to appeal, 10 days to request court-appointed counsel. Do you acknowledge receipt of your appellate rights? Your Honor, I've got the notice of right to appeal, and I'm providing it to my client now. Do you acknowledge it? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Let me just say to the media, again, I'm just doing my job. I know you all want to talk to me. My secretary has informed me that I have a growing stack of requests from print media, from television, from magazines, from around the world, literally. This story is not about me. It never was about me. I hope I've opened some doors, but you see, I'm a little stupid because I thought everybody did what I did. And if they didn't, maybe they ought to, but I do this and have been doing it. And if you don't believe me, the keeper of my words is right by my side, and lawyers who are hearing this are shaking their heads saying, yep, I've waited too long, as she lets everybody talk. Sometimes people get upset. I don't care. I get paid the same. So as to the media who want to talk with me, I'm not going to be making any statements. I know that my office, and I may have even, I don't know, been the one a couple of weeks conveyed that after this is over. It's just not my story. After the appellate period runs, with victims by my side to tell their stories, I might answer some more questions than what I said on the record. I don't know what more I could possibly say. But I'm not going to talk with any media person until after the appeal period, and even then, if you talk to me about this case, I will have a survivor with me because it is their story. So I wanted everybody to hear that from me. I respect all of the media outlets. You've done just a fabulous job here. There hasn't been any commotion or upset by this, and I do believe in the First Amendment, so I thank you all for being here because it's an important story for the survivors. As to today, I know that there are a lot of survivors, family members, husbands, friends, a lot of people in the courtroom. You have voices. I'm going to leave the courtroom. Defendant will leave the courtroom. The attorneys may stay. Victims, family members, survivors, 
you may stay in the courtroom and talk with media. You can have your own press conference right here. Spur of the moment sometimes works out the best, doesn't it? Again, I won't make a statement until after the appeal period. And again, if there's any survivor then who, at that point, if somebody wants to talk to me, I'm sure you'll be moved on to another story. But if you're not, please give your names to uh, the victim's advocate so that I can contact you. Because please, media, do not contact me on this story without a survivor. It's their story. <coughs> I thank everybody in this case. Sir, I hope somewhere you have heard everybody's words and it really does resonate with you. Anything else for the record? Nothing on behalf of people, I'm sorry. Nothing but half uh, no, Mr. Lester. All right. So the media is asked to stay here with all those lovely people who may want to speak with you. Thank you. That's all for the record. All right. What the ladies talking about?